I might question you on things, but I'll take the lead. Good morning, welcome to another episode of Friends Green Porsche Prep Book. In this video, what we're going to do is the 997 Generation 911s and the Taurus for coolant leaks. And we've got a prime suspect, shall I say, here. We've got a variety of coolant leaks, haven't we, Ollie? Yeah. So we're going to go through them one by one and we're going to show them being remedied in a bit more detail this time. So, I've just spoken to Wally. He's decided to um, tackle the most difficult job, or the most time-consuming job on this car first, which is... Come on, Ollie, this is where you take it away. All right, so basically it's two coolant pipes that run up the back side of the car, and they go sort of over the engine on each side, and they suffer really badly from corrosion at sort of this point of the car, which we'll show you in a second. But basically, you pretty much have to drop the engine. You have to just take the engine out to get to them to actually pull them out. So you have done these before by just lowering it a little bit, but yeah, it makes the job harder than, yeah. yeah. It's way more hassle. You have to take the handbrake cable out, out of the way. And so we'll just whip the engine out, eh? Yeah, because we're doing both of them on this car. So it's far easier just to take the engine out. Let's get it in the air and show these two yeah. suspects. Okay, we've lifted the car up. Ollie, show the two pipes that the engine's got to be dropped because they're corroded and need replacing. So the two alley pipes, they're, they're just up here and they've run down, just down by the side of the engine, down the body here, and they suffer the worst here. As you can see, they just start crumbling away and then they eventually start leaking. Um, they're, just, they're very similar to the front crossover pipes. So it's just a poor oh, connection, basically. Cracking. Yeah, they've used the same design on the crossover pipes in the front that you've seen us do loads of times, and you will see us do in this video. But as you can see, they start corroding on the ends, they start splitting, then they'll start leaking. You can see the pink staining on there. That signs of coolant getting out, and then evaporating on the pipe and leaving those stains. So basically, the coolant system works. So I come to the front of the car. Okay, I'm retaking this clip because Ollie's taking the under trays off so we can see these pipes a bit better now. So, the way in which the coolant system works is we've got two air ducts in the front where the radiators are. Cool air goes into there, cools the coolant in the radiators. It then feeds that cooled coolant along the off side of the car. This one here. So that's called the feed pipe, which feeds the engine with cool coolant. There's the one that we're lowering the engine to change up there at the end of my light. The cool coolant then goes into the water jacket around the engine, cools the engine. The hot coolant then comes out, goes into the expansion tank, which is up in the engine bay up there. And then this side is known as the return pipe side. So the hot coolant will come down that pipe there and then back to the radiators to be cooled again. So here we go, it's better show that system. This is the parts diagram for the two pipes that we're changing on the car. Number one, the feed pipe, and number two, the return pipe, there's the expansion tank. Okay, so the engine is obviously out, as you can see. Now, unfortunately, my memory ran out. And I didn't get the time lapse, but we'll get that when it goes back in, won't we? Yeah. So I've got iCloud storage now. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to quickly, well, what we'll do, we'll show these two pipes again, because they can be seen better now. So here is pipe number one which is the return pipe going from the expansion tank, which we can now see. Here is pipe number two, which is the feed pipe. There's the corroded connection. We're gonna replace the two rubber ones as well. This one and this short one here, then go to the center ones, which are okay, as you can see. Right, go on, I'll explain how you got the engine onto the floor in a nutshell, because obviously it's a long so process. Basically, we have to just disconnect all the coolant pipes, we have to disconnect the power steering pipes here, the air conditioning of the air conditioning compressor, and come over here and you can see 
and the coolant pipes were taken off here. So that goes to the return line. This one goes to the feed line and these will go to the expansion bottle. There's just one uh, fuel connection there and then the other one is um, the vacuum line. Um, and then you've just got the wiring loom over here which you disconnect. And there's some small other bits and bobs here and there. And then it's just the gearbox mount, the engine mounts, and then carefully taking it down. So we've got the engine mounts that we talk about all the time that can be seen very easily now. We've got one there and we've got one just there. And then the gearbox mounting position further on on the little subframe that goes up. Obviously there's all sorts of cross members and everything that needs to come off as well. Gear cables, live wire connections, so the battery's disconnected. Obviously the rear bumper's off. Yeah. But yeah, that's how the engine drops out as a whole with the exhaust back boxes. There you go, you can see the gearbox mounting frame there. So yeah, what we're going to do now, whip out these two coolant pipes. Yeah, and uh, upon taking the gearbox down, we've actually found that one of the brake pipes is badly corroded and uh, it's actually started leaking. So and that's the up and over. Further. They call that the up and over brake pipe because it goes up and over the gearbox. Anyway, Jack's making noise now, so we'll wrap this up. Thanks, Jack. Okay, we're back in the workshop. The 997 is still on the ramp, but we're, we're done. Yeah, we're more or less done. We've just, got, we've just still need to leave some brakes, but we've got all the coolant pipes in. We've got the over gearbox brake pipe in. Let me um, spin this camera around, Ollie, and we'll show these pipes. So, so we've got all the new pipe work in. We've replaced the two that go down the side of the engine and we've also done the crossover pipes as well. Look how lovely and shiny and new that is, eh? As we can see now, you can imagine how difficult that would be trying to get that out with just lowering the engine a bit, hence Ollie whipped the whole engine out. So there we go. We've got the old ones on the floor. Shall I show them now? Yeah. So there's the over engine feed and return pipe, pipes. Yeah. Look at the state of those connections on there. Hang on, let me get this to focus. Yeah. And they're both like that. Look at that side as well. This one's particularly bad. You can see it's completely rotted away. There's nothing holding that on. That could just burst, burst off at any point. It's a really poor kind of design, that, isn't it? How the aluminium pipe slots over the rubber hose like that. There we go. Right, yeah. crossover pipes. Yeah, so we've got the crossover pipes in as well. So we may have forgotten to do a time lapse of the crossover pipes. Yeah. We've covered this quite a few times. I may put a quick clip in of us doing these previously. But in essence, as we spoke about many times, these two aluminium pipes that you can see the ends of there cross over the top of the front subframe. We can still see them, can't we, with this under trays off. And go to the opposing side and meet the radiators up, basically, before it then transfers the coolant down the pipes to those ones at the back we were just talking about. So we've actually got the crossover pipes, the old ones on the floor too. As you can see, the connection design is the same. And you're in a similar sort of state. Right. Coolant expansion bottle. Yeah, that's, that was done when uh, the engine was out, just because it's easier to whip it out. You usually have to drop the engine to put them in. So what did we find? You actually found a crack in the expansion tank yeah. upon the inspection before yeah. the engine came down, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, it has a crack in the usual place. We'll have to go and get that as well. Should we get that out? Should we go and yeah. grab it? We'll grab it. Right, we've chucked the old yeah. <laughs> coolant expansion tank away, but luckily, because we're going through the fast rate of knots at the moment, we actually got a new one in stock, so. Yeah. Show where the crack where, on this one was and where they well, usually are. Where I most commonly see them is about this point. You can just see, if you get a torch in there, you can actually see them when they start to crack, not to the point where they leak, but 
you can see the cracks start appearing here. That's the most common place I see them. But I have also seen them in other places as well. I've seen them on the seams. Yeah, uh, they can crack in all sorts of places. A sign that you're calling an expansion tank is needing to be replaced is when they start getting discolored and going yellow. Yeah, you can just tell how old they are by the color of the thing. Yeah. So that's a new one and it's white. When they get old, they just get very yellow and discolored, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, how did... <laughs> we also replace the caps as well, because these can also go faulty. So I just asked Ollie, I said, how did you, uh, how did you notice it on this one? And, or, or... Well, I said with a torch in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's show it in the engine bay and see how we inspect them when it's all in situ. As you can see, they're quite tucked away to the left there, so it's not always that easy to actually see them. But you have to get a torch in around the side there, and you can really, it's quite, you can see it right around the back there. So there we go. As you can see, that would be impossible to remove without removing some more components. So usually, we wouldn't drop an engine just to change that. What would you usually do to? Well, you'd have to, you do have to drop the engine, but you only drop it from this side you just have to lower it enough to allow you to get it and pull it out yeah which means you don't have to disconnect all the fuel lines and the, the loom and yeah, all that sort of well, stuff you only still have to you only have to um disconnect the fuel line there but it just gives you enough room to pull it out it is still really tight but um that's why we just did it on everything without it's just easier to slot it out and slot the new one back in what should we talk about the last thing on these cars i mean the coolant expansion tank isn't specific to the 997s, it's just as prone on the 996, and in fact they use the same expansion tank. Top tip with the expansion tanks, never ever buy an aftermarket ones, because we're forever seeing aftermarket tanks that have been fitted within the last year or so, and they're already leaking, they're of a poor quality. And also, always buy a genuine and a new coolant expansion tank cap, which he's still got, which he's still got in his hand. The aftermarket ones are usually black, so that's a an easy sign that it's got an aftermarket cap on it and potentially tank. So one more thing we want to show, it's not specific to a 997, but the Porsches and, and cars in general, but the water pump. So the water pump, if you look at the back of the car, is located here on the left lower side. And so that's something to look out for. Obviously, just look for pink staining around there and moisture. Um, what else? Put a pry behind there and fill the bearing in the water pump yeah, itself. Yeah, sometimes they go really wobbly and fail. And actually leak through the middle there. But this car is okay, so water yeah. pump has not been replaced. I think that's it. That kind of wraps up everything on the coolant yeah. system, doesn't it? So yeah. It's Saturday afternoon. I've got the 997 Carrera sat here behind me. All the work's done. The coolant system has had a comprehensive refresh, as you saw. The last job that was to be completed after you saw it in the workshop was for the coolant system to be bled up. So when doing work to a coolant system, you're going to get air in that system that needs to be bled to the top. Otherwise, you're going to have the car overheating. So there's a procedure that has to be gone through to get the air out. That's been done. The last job, actually, that still needs to be done is we still don't have a, a, a wheel arm machine here at FGP. That's to come. So after the front subframe's been dropped for the front crossover pipe to be replaced, subframe gets reinstalled, but you can never get it back exactly where it came from. So the front wheel alignment is adjusted slightly and that has to have another wheel alignment to get it right. So we've got to run it down for that. But anyway, the purpose for it being outside today is I'm going to walk around it and demonstrate how you can inspect for these issues with the coolant system with a car on the floor. So if you go and look at one, you can do what I'm about to do and get a good idea whether it needs any work on the coolant system. So let's have a look. So my first port of call is always to have a look at the coolant itself. So always ask for a car to be unstarted and left cold when you go to look at it. Not just for the coolant system purposes, but also so you can make sure there's no smoke coming from the engine upon a cold startup or no ticking from the engine etc etc but anyway ask for it to be cold never remove this cap when the car's hot because the system's under pressure and the coolant is likely to burst out and burn you essentially anyway make sure it's cold take the cap off have a look inside and this is what the coolant should look like so obviously we've just put lovely new coolant in it should be pink in color that's what the Porsches take now we'll check for the level as you can see it's got the min and max markers on the side there 
So the seam on the expansion tank is actually the level indicator. Now, if your level's low, if it's down here somewhere, that's of course a strong indication there's gonna be a leak somewhere and we need to have a, have a good look for it. However, if it isn't low, it's at the right point here, still don't assume that there's no leaks in the system because somebody could have just topped that up before you've gone to have a look at the car. Next, as Ollie was saying earlier in the video, have a good look at that expansion tank itself. And a strong indication of age is the color of it. So this one's new and it's white. Older ones will gradually get more and more yellow. So look, just have a good look around that expansion tank. As he was explaining, you can also stick your head in here. I can't read with the camera and look along the side. And that is the most prone area that we see them crack along the side down there. There we go, have a good look at that expansion tank and make sure all looks well. Next, while we're here, we may as well have a look at the water pump. So we're at the near side tailpipe tip here. I'm afraid you're gonna have to get on your back and get a bit dirty here. If we look up. So this is the thermostat. I'll try and get the camera to focus. This is the thermostat and directly above the thermostat linking with these hoses is the water pump. So what we're looking out for, like earlier in the video with the coolant pipes, is we're looking for pink staining anywhere around this area. If coolant's getting out, it will immediately evaporate on these hot components and leave that pink staining. As you can see, we haven't got that here. What you can do while you're in the engine bay, actually, is you can see those large over-engine pipes. So you see that shiny pipe down there with that poorly designed connection piece. And you can see it running along the back there and then going underneath the car to where you saw that poor connection earlier in the video. You can inspect them from this end, but these ends don't suffer because of course they're tucked away in the engine bay away from dirt and grime from the road. You can see the other one there. And then you can see it going back, that nice shiny one back there. But like I say, these ends don't suffer and we can't see the other end without getting the car in the end, in the air, sorry, and removing the under tray. So that's one point you can't inspect. But let's go and have a look at the crossover pipes. So with the crossover pipes, you're not gonna see them through the wheels. So what you need to do is start the car. Put it on hard lock left to have a look at the right hand side. You need to get your torch in there and then as you can see, we can see those two new connection hoses and those two new aluminium pipes. So if I try and zoom in, there we go. So it's that connection point at the end that corrodes. So you'll be able to see that if I can get it to focus. So there you go. To the other side, we do the same thing, but in reverse. So we put hard lock right. And there we go. The camera on your phone is actually a very, very helpful tool when looking at cars because I couldn't particularly see through my eyes the crossover pipes there, but I could see it on my phone screen. So I'm forever taking pictures in wheel arches when I'm looking at cars. Something else we can check that we haven't mentioned in this video up until this point is the radiators. So of course we can't really see because we've got grills on this car, but the air conditioning condenser is first in there. You can just about make out a silver object back there. And then the radiator sits behind it. So even if we didn't have these grills here, we can't physically check the radiators. So what I advise you do is use your nose. So coolant has a very kind of sweet smell. So if we start the car up, leave it running until it gets hot, the fans will start running. And if there is a leak on those radiators, it's gonna blow the smell of that leaking coolant out and you'll be able to smell it. Most notably through these 
air guides here. So just get down in the wheel arch and have a good sniff when the fans are going, basically. That wraps us up for this video then. I hope it's been interesting and perhaps of some use. Most of the jobs that you've seen us do to the coolant system on this car are actually on our fixed price menu now. So for instance, renewing the front crossover coolant pipes is on there as a fixed price. Renewing the water pump is on there as a fixed price. The thermosat's on there as a fixed price. And the expansion tank is on there as a fixed price. So check it out. If you've got any coolant system leaks, which if you've got a 997, you probably have, um, have a look and we can help if need be. Let me know in the comments what you want us to do for a next video. Um, we've got lots of cars and, and lots of work to do. So yeah, let us know and we'll try to get onto that. Thanks for watching. And as they say on YouTube, see you in the next one.